So you know for sure that when you flip up your mic and go, Mom, can you get me a glass of milk? And then you flip it back down, you'll know for sure that your stream didn't hear your embarrassing speech. Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. As you can see, I've got the Victrix Gambit wireless headset. And this is a really exciting product because until now, I've never really had a wireless headset. So now I've got one which is really funky and kind of fashionable too. So it means I can do cool stuff like this, like walking away from my computer and you can still hear my voice. This microphone is a dynamic mic. You've got to like speak right into it. Otherwise you can't hear anything. But with a headset like this, I can actually do VR videos and just walk around and spin around as many times as I want. Now before we get into the review, I should point out that Victrix did send this headset to me for the purposes of making this review, but all the opinions in this video, of course, are always my own. It costs $130, it's wireless or wired. It comes with this if you want to plug it into a standard headphone jack. And the main point, of course, is that now you can listen to the sound from your game, but you can also talk to your friends who are also playing the game using this built-in microphone. Now, personally, I don't actually play a lot of games where I'm actually talking to people at the same time, so this is kind of an unusual review for me. I'm just thinking of this as just a nice set of headphones and a nice microphone. It's also got a little volume control so that you can change the volume of the game audio coming in. You've also got three different settings for the audio of the mic so that you can monitor your own voice. You can have it off, medium or quite loud. And feature-wise, as I understand it, the main thing about this headset is that it's meant to be a bit like Victrix's expensive headset, Pro AF Active Noise Cancelling Headset. Now that headset by comparison is $300, so more than double the price of this one. But the main differences are you don't have the cool Victrix purple glowing logo on the side. It's just significantly less purple. You don't look like you're wearing an expensive cool headset. And with gaming accessories, it's almost more about the look than the actual quality of the item. It's sad, it's a sad situation, but the game is more important. Like the game is the main thing people are watching. And if your voice sounds terrible and the audio sounds terrible, it kind of doesn't even really matter. But I'm under the impression that the Victrix Pro AF ANC active noise canceling headset is quite nice. So when I was asked to review this headset, they gave me a little bump about what this product is. They basically said, it's like the expensive headset, but in a cheaper package. Now the thing is, I usually just use a pair of standard headphones and a microphone, which means I can choose any microphone I want and I can use my own headset. They're not wireless, you have to use them with wire and there's no microphone built in. So if you're looking for something that you can just plug straight in, play games and chat to your friends and maybe record dialogue or do a live stream at the same time, this thing does basically all of the things that you need in one headset. Now it's a little bit difficult to convey to you through a video what it actually sounds like in these headphones, but I would say that compared to this, they're not quite as nice. Like when you listen to music, on this pair of headphones, they're not completely flat EQ response. This has slightly increased bass and very slightly increased trebles, but overall the balance on a headset like this is crisp. You hear all of the instruments and it's, it just sounds like you're kind of, if you close your eyes, the instruments are kind of there in front of you. Not perfectly like you totally believe they're there, but you can imagine in the stereo imaging field kind of where the instruments are, kind of how far away from you they are. But the Victrix headset by comparison doesn't feel quite as clear. And in fact, instead of having like higher bass and higher trebles, it feels like it's almost the opposite. The middle is either bumped up or like the lows and the highs are kind of cut off a little bit. Now, when I was first testing this headset out, I thought, mm, that's a bit of a shame. Like $130, I want it to sound really, really nice. And I want it to be crisp in the top end and also kind of crisp and clear in the base end as well. But when I started thinking about it, it is a gaming headset. And if you've got your own voice coming in through the monitor, because this actually feeds some of the sound directly to your ears so that you know exactly what you're saying. Because if you've never used headphones like this, it's kind of weird to not be able to hear your own voice. So the fact that it has instant monitoring of your voice with, as far as I can tell, no delay, it's actually kind of important that it isn't too crisp on the top end because over like a three hour live stream or a five hour or eight hour live stream, you're gonna get very, very painful 
like ears because your own voice has got a lot of top end sibilance and sound. So what I originally thought was a bit of a minus point, in my opinion, for a gaming headset, this might actually be a benefit because anything you feed into it is going to be slightly rolled off on the top. And because, again, we're not here to listen to classical music. We're here to just do live streams or play games. I think it's going to be nicer on your ears to have a, a mid heavy sound as opposed to a top end cut scooped out sound. So to cut a long story short, you get essentially what you would expect for a 60 to $70 headset, but it costs $130. So let's talk about why does it cost that little bit extra? So here are the reasons why Victrix says it's worth your extra money. Noise isolating head cups, which is effectively what every set of headphones has. It's got these, these cups like this so that you don't hear too much sound from outside and you don't hear too much clicking sound from your keyboard. And if you're in a tournament environment, then you don't hear too much of the crowd outside as well. But it's not noise cancelling, it's noise isolating. I think the more expensive ones have actual noise cancelling where it puts the opposite sound into your ear so that essentially it's plus minus, you hear nothing outside from the outside world. I'd say they do a pretty good job. If I turn the microphone off, I mean, of course I can still hear my own voice, but I feel like my voice is in the room next door. I think it does a fairly good job of isolating the sound, but it's not a unique feature really. The next feature on here is 50 millimeter speakers. Now in terms of marketing, it sounds like this is gonna have significantly higher quality audio than other gaming headsets. Unfortunately, I don't really own a lot of cheap gaming headsets, so I can't really tell you whether that's actually true. But what I can say is that it doesn't sound as nice, like I was saying about the quality earlier, it doesn't sound as nice as buying, you know, headphones which are designed for listening to music. But, like I said earlier, don't buy this for listening to music. Buy this because it's gonna be convenient for playing games and having a microphone built in. The next feature which is supposedly better than other gaming headphones is this flexible noise cancelling microphone with flip to mute feature. Now the flip to mute feature is great. I really like it because it's very clear. Now it's not recording the microphone. Now it is recording the microphone and it's got a little beep. So when you click it up, it goes beep boop. And when you click it down, it goes beep beep. And it's the opposite sound. So you know and you feel very confident that it's not recording sound. So you know for sure that when you flip up your mic and go, mom, can you get me a glass of milk? And then you flip it back down, you'll know for sure that your stream didn't hear your embarrassing speech. One thing that I'm not 100% convinced about is the noise cancelling part. Now on the, I'm actually going to read this from their official website. Be heard loud and clear through the bi-directional noise cancelling mic originally created for the Cobra attack helicopter. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what kind of noise cancelling technology they were using for the Cobra attack helicopter, but apparently it wasn't very good because as you can hear, this is not doing any sort of, oops, sorry. This is not doing any kind of noise cancelling. Now the last feature which might put ahead of other headsets is the wireless connection. And in my experience, I didn't notice any lag. It felt very simple to use. I do love the fact that it's wireless because again, like I said at the start of the video, I wanna go off down the road. <laughs> I can't, you can't go that far. You can go maybe, it says 40 feet, but yeah. It is wireless and that is very, very convenient. So that's the lowdown on the headset, the main features it's supposed to have and you know how it feels in general. But here are my opinions personally on the headset. I am not sure that it's worth $130. I'm under the impression that you might be able to get basically the same features in a cheaper headset, but it is quite nice and it does look kind of cool. The thing is, if you're going for that expensive Victrix look, you're not really getting it because you don't get the purple on the side of the headphones. And looks wise, it just makes your head look kind of wider than it is. I, I, I feel like I want this to be slimmer or something, but it makes my head look wider than when I've got other headphones, maybe because it, it puffs out a lot. Speaking of puffing out a lot, you see these headphone cups, they look like they're really, really plush and really, really comfortable. This surface is not really touching all of your head. It's only like, it's kind of rounded. And so only like the tip of it is touching your head. And so when you're wearing it, it is really comfortable, but it's not as comfortable as these ear cups. Now these ear cups didn't come with my original headphones. They cost like $10. I think they cost $10 for the pair, but these are like some of the most comfortable ear cups I've ever had. They're not uncomfortable. I'm just saying, <sighs> I feel like for $130, it could have been nicer. The noise cancelling mic clearly doesn't do any noise cancelling whatsoever. In fact, I'm not convinced I would want to live stream with this either. Maybe for chatting with friends on Discord, it's, you know, good enough. But the quality of the audio is, is 
poor. <laughs> it sounds really, really bad. And I wouldn't want to record a video with this. I wouldn't want to record a live stream with this. And I feel I would feel bad for my friends on Discord if they had to listen to my voice through this because it, it sounds like I'm talking through. I don't know, a telephone made out of cardboard and cardboard cups and string. The only other thing I can really say about the headset is that even though it just does what it says on the tin, it kind of feels a bit like this. This is the, the Gambit controller that they sent me and the way they spoke about it, they made it sound like it was the messiah. It was going to like save the universe from all destruction because it could do all these amazing things that no controller has ever done before. It's, it just turned out to be not as good as the marketing sound made it sound like it was going to be. And that's kind of what this feels like. It's not a bad headset, but the purple you see on here, you can't really even see it in real life. And all the features that they talk about on the website and on the back of the box, it's like, I don't know, they talk big. Just the, the, the marketing speak that Victrix uses makes it sound like it's really something special, but it turns out to be just kind of normal. There's one thing that I sort of tested, but wasn't really able to test. And it's this 3D audio thing for PlayStation 5. And if you buy the Xbox version, it's Dolby Atmos. The way that the marketing makes it sound is that this is a Dolby Atmos headset. And you you'll be able to hear sound in 3D, and you'll know if a shot came from in front of you here, or, oops, almost knocked over my coffee, whether a shot came from right behind you at, you know, 180 degrees this way, or 70 degrees this way. And I studied a bit of sound engineering in university, and I have a fairly good idea of what it sounds like when things are behind me compared to like speakers and headphones that are trying to do 3D audio. When it comes to 3D audio, here's what you should expect. Essentially using various tricks and certain frequencies that do it better, they can make things sound absolutely like they're going around behind you because the brain already filters sounds that come from behind you. So audio can be matched with those filters to make it sound like stuff is behind you. What's a little bit more difficult is making sounds like seem like they're in front of you. Fortunately, because we're all used to headphones, you, you know that if a sound is in your left ear, it's on the left. If it sounds like it's right inside your brain, then it's probably somewhere in front of you in the middle. And if it's on the right ear, obviously it's from the right. Oh, 3D audio, what it really sounds like is that sound is going through your head and then going around behind you. So instead of like a 360 shape, it's more like a U shape where like it's a, it's a flat or a D shape rather. It's like a flat line across from the right the inside of your head, the left, and then it goes around in a circle behind your head. But what you don't get is a 360 field, like it's going around in front of you. To get Dolby 3D, where it sounds like the sounds are actually in front of you, or a little bit to the right in front of you, or a little bit to the left in front of you, as far as I'm aware, you still kind of need a speaker setup. 3D does still work though, so if you're looking for shots coming from behind you to the right, or from shots coming to behind you to the left, as far as I'm aware, Dolby Atmos does a fairly good job of that. I listened to the demos through the Dolby Atmos app. And first of all, the number of games that actually have Dolby Atmos built in is small. Like, I think it's been going for quite a long time, but it's still not that widespread. For something that, which, in my opinion, it should be quite easy to implement something like that. They haven't actually implemented it in that many games. So it's like the likelihood that you have one of those games that involves Dolby Atmos. I don't know, might be quite low anyway. The other thing is that you don't need this headset to use Dolby Atmos. Dolby Atmos is built to work with any set of headphones. Of course, if you have a really crappy set of headphones, it's gonna be not as good. So the idea is that with the Victrix Gambit headset, that it's like well suited for Dolby Atmos. But again, I've got, as long as you've got a good set of headphones designed for listening to music, you don't need a Gambit headset to use Dolby Atmos. In fact, all you really need is $15 or $10 when it's on sale because you go on the Microsoft store, click the button for $15 and now you've got Dolby Atmos and you can use it, I think, on any headset that you've got. It's not always clear on the Victrix website, but the PlayStation version doesn't come with the lifetime subscription to Dolby Access, which is, again, as far as I can tell, just a $15 purchase. Instead, the PlayStation version comes with PlayStation 5 3D audio compatibility, uh, but I don't have a PlayStation 5, so I can't test it. I did test it with this Dolby Atmos, and yeah, I mean, it, it sounds all right, but that means you have to listen to music and cool and movies and stuff through this, which I just, 
don't think I would. I would prefer to just use a nicer set of headphones. But what actually kind of annoyed me was the fact that Dolby Atmos, which is included with these Victrix products, I don't know about the headset, but I had to use Dolby Atmos through the subscription included with the Gambit controller. I wasn't aware of this, but you don't just plug it in and unlock your subscription. You plug it in and use the subscription. So when you unplug this controller, when it's not plugged in, like with the cable to your PC, it doesn't think you have a Dolby Access subscription anymore. I've got this plugged into the, the wireless dongle right now. It thinks I don't have Dolby At Atmos. The only way that I was personally able to use Dolby Atmos to at least, you know, just check it out kind of on the demos was to plug a 3.5 millimeter cable into the base of the gambit and then plug this into the headphone and then plug this with the Victrix USB-C cable into my PC. And so I was like, at all of these cables, just so I could listen to 3D audio, when I, I thought it was supposed to be so much simpler. What I'm saying is, if you really want Dolby Atmos and you're absolutely sure that you're only gonna listen to it through these Gambit headphones, then get the Xbox version. Because the PlayStation version, you just have to shell out another $15 to actually get a real Dolby Atmos subscription. I still don't 100% understand how the subscription works. Another couple things about the headset. On the website, it looks like there's a roller switch here, but there isn't on the actual product. And even today on the website, this is like a couple months after this product has already launched, they're still using that same image, which shows like some kind of mixer between the game audio and your voice audio, but that doesn't actually exist on the product. Or maybe it's just because I've got the PlayStation version, but it doesn't say that on the website. What you actually have is a mode switch. You click it once and it mutes the microphone so you don't hear your own voice. You click it twice and then you can hear like your voice, but it's quiet-ish. And then you click it again and your voice is just really loud in your ears. And there's really not much fine-tuned control. So you have to use the very loud setting and then put the mic far away from you. Or you can put it on the really quiet setting and put the mic closer to you. But the thing about the microphone is that the dynamic range is a little bit finicky. Basically, when it's like this close, it's really loud and kind of distorts when you speak loudly. And then if you put it here, then it just sounds like you're a million miles away. So it's like trying to find exactly the right position for this mic is a little bit more finicky. I mean, obviously, once you've said it, you can just forget about it. But I think it's a little bit grating, kind of, <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just because my voice is kind of grating, but it kind of hurts my ears. What would have been nicer would have been a real volume dial, like what they showed on the website. I just don't know why it's on the website and it's not on the final product. So a little bit concerning. You do, however, have a proper volume switch for your actual game audio, which is coming in through the, the wireless on this here. Now, when you're using the wired cable, you actually plugged a cable into this. You don't yet to use this dial here. You have to switch to using the inline controls. There's a volume switch on the cable here. So that's not an issue, but something you should know, you know, the, there's two separate volume dials, one for analog audio in and one for wireless audio in. All right, time for my final conclusion on the Victrix Gambit wireless headset. I feel like you can get exactly the same quality and the exact same features for less money. But if you get the Victrix version, you do get a very easy to use wireless dongle, which did work on my PlayStation 4. And you also get this cool feature where when you flip it like this, the mic is muted, you click it down and the mic is unmuted. And it's very clear. You hear the beep and you know that it has switched itself off or switched itself on. So you can ask your mum to run errands for you or dad, of course. And if price is not a concern of yours, the only other thing I would say when you're considering buying this is when you're on the website, be aware that a lot of the features in here, like they've, they're kind of blown out of proportion as if they're like life changing. You've, you're about to buy the most earth shattering sound ever made by a pair of headphones. It's kind of not as earth shattering as the marketing makes it out. If, you, if you're just very calm and you understand what you're getting yourself into, a funky looking headset with a very convenient mic feature, which also has a nice wireless dongle, which works on your PlayStation or your Xbox if you buy the Xbox version, that's what it is. It's quite simple and it seems to do the job fairly well. I'm just not 100% convinced that it needs to be called the wireless surround sound gaming headset because essentially if you pay $15 and you buy a Dolby Access subscription, you can kind of turn any headset into a surround sound headset and 
to be honest. At the quality here, I don't think you're getting like a significantly higher quality surround sound experience. $130 is quite simple. You get everything you need. Fairly good audio with cups that are not painful, but not the most comfortable. You've got the mic to mute feature. You've got wired mode if you want wired mode, but you've also got the very convenient wireless dongle, which you can plug into your PlayStation or like what I'm doing right now, it's plugged into my PC, which is recording the audio wirelessly so that you can play VR games and spin around 360 degrees and not get tangled up in cables. You can do your live streams. You could, if you, I suppose if you wanted to, you could use this mic to record audio for videos. Again, I wouldn't, but maybe you would. You know, you don't get the purple on the side, but you do technically get the bragging rights that you bought a Victrix product. So it's a little bit like buying, <laughs> this is a terrible analogy, but it's a little bit like buying a Porsche Boxster. You buy a Porsche Boxster and you're like, yeah, I own a Porsche. And they're like, oh, sweet, Did you get the 911? You're like, no, I, I bought the, the Boxster because it's, you know, <laughs> cheaper. That's kind of what this is. People who want to feel like they bought a Victrix product and it's good but it's not like high end really. It doesn't feel like a high end product. Yeah, I've got a Victrix gaming headset and it does sound cool. And I think it looks cool as well, but people won't know that you're using a Victrix headset until you tell them because it doesn't have the purple on it. And so people really can't tell that you're wearing a Victrix product. It's one of those like, you've got bragging rights, but you have to actually brag to people so that they know that you've got something cool. Um, and I don't know, is that really the point? Maybe you should just spend a bit more money and buy the, the more expensive one. Listen, that's all I've got time for in this review. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more reviews like this. Leave a comment if you maybe you've got this headset and you've got some opinions you'd like to share or maybe you've got some questions about the headset, leave them in the comments section below. And like the video, of course, if you enjoyed it. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.